for a Christian to succeed, your strength is not in yourself. It's in following the lead of Jesus. Our effectiveness is to follow the shepherd. If you follow him, he will lead you in the path of righteousness. He will lead you beside still waters. He will prepare a table before you. It doesn't matter how many enemies that are standing on your way. As long as he is the one that prepared it, no devil can stop your progress. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Abba Father. We give you thanks, we give you praise. We honor your name, O oh God, for who you are. It is by your grace we are here this morning. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We honor you, we give you all the glory. We thank you, Jesus. Be thou exalted and be thou glorified. I know the angels are standing side by side in front of you and behind you to place you this morning. I know you have come to meet with Jesus and I'm asking you to tell God what you want God to do for you because God is going to place you before the end of today. God is going to give you your your heart desires. Open your mouth and begin to tell God what you want God to do for you. Abba Father, we thank you. We magnify you. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, we have come to meet with you and not with men. We ask that your grace will speak on our behalf. We ask that you will lift us up above our equals. We'll always be on top. We'll be the first. Lord, we'll be on top, oh Lord, that our light will shine. Your grace will speak on our behalf. You, We are here, oh God, for you to to bless us and do us good. We are here, Jesus, for our um, miracles because our miracles have been packaged and they, uh, they, they, we, God has distributed miracles for us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Abba Father. At this point, I want us to begin to say, Jesus, your light will shine in my life. Your light will shine in my business. Your light will shine in everything that I do. Lord, we thank you, Abba Father. We ask, oh God, that your light will shine in everything that we do. Your light will shine in our business. The grace of God will speak for us and after us. The grace of God will go with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus as we make welcome the inspirational choir. If you are celebrating Jesus, I believe it can be better. Is this how you praise your God? Come on, somebody put those hands together and give Jesus a shout. Can you just give your father a dance? Oh, 
worship it.
exalted father for you. I'm not just saying it. We have some mind-blowing testimony to share. Hallelujah. I'll take the first one. This God is amazingly beautiful. The God of Miracle Assembly has showed himself in my life all the time. I always do my general checkup every three months. So last week, Saturday, I went for it. And I was told to come back on Monday for my result. Pastor made a declaration that no sickness is permitted to be in our body. My amen was so loud as if I had been diagnosed of an amen before. So on Monday, I asked my nurse to go get the result. On getting there, the lab guy called me requesting that if, requesting if he can give the result to her. I responded by saying yes, but deep down, I was like, what thing they happen? Immediately, the nurse called me asking if I'm alone. I was surprised to hear such a question, so I responded by saying yes. Only for her to tell me that my enemy is HIV positive. Immediately, I rejected the result and I told her I am too beautiful and too decent to have such a trash result because I know myself and the God that I'm serving. But later on, I was like, I, be, I don't go one saloon. And mistakenly, I don't contact the disease. So on Tuesday morning, I went to a dose specialist hospital for a confirmatory test. Brethren, behold, I did the test and it came out negative. Church, is that the best you can do? I can imagine the trauma that lady went through. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, but before the test, I kept saying it in my mouth that this is my mouth of good news. That only good news is going to happen to me because I am in my year of rest. The devil is a liar. God has turned it to my favor. That was from Miss Faith. I'll take the next one. I want to give thanks, glory to God for this wonderful works in my life. Last September, stroke October, I started a building project for a shop along Mission Road. By January 2024, I moved in and arranged all the goods inside my shop. Meanwhile, while I was building, I kept it from people around me. So they got to know about it by January. And gossip, we are making runs on where I got money to build a shop in Mission Road. I finished the arrangement on the 26th of January and on the 2nd of February at about 9 p.m. I got a call that my shop is on fire. Multimedia, let's see the video. This is it. The shop, she entered in January, February 2nd. She got a call that the shop is on fire. It was a very funny experience. The next morning, the executive of Pastor Seco were already at the shop and they encouraged me. They said that it, was, it is well that I was coming back big, bigger. Anybody that saw the shop was just crying, but I was holding on to God because he has never failed me. My spiritual father, Pastor Jeff, came and prophesied sevenfold restoration with speed. My faith became stronger. One morning as I was praying, God asked me to open to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and asked me, what does it illustrate? Then said, if dry bones shall rise again, then he told me the prophecy of a man of God that I will rise again. And today, I am back. Let's see that video. Today, she is back. Bigger. Better. Bigger. Better. Church, you can be seated praising this God of restoration. Hallelujah. She is back. Bigger. Better. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, he said, I want to give all the glory to God and to our Father and the Lord, Pastor Jeff, for his spiritual support and financial support and to the billionaire's tribe, Pastor Seko. God of restoration did it again. Words are not enough for me to say thank you, Lord, for Mrs. Egbe. Hallelujah. Church, is that the best you can do? It looks as if this too is mind-blowing. Wait for this last one. It's a good morning, church. My name is Daniel. I am sharing this testimony from Italy. I want to thank God for restoration. I lost my job indefinitely on the 13th of March, 2024. But I was not worried due to the fact that I knew God was always going to make a way. Then came Change Equation Program, the one that ended last week. On the second day of the program, after the communion, 
pastor prophesied that anyone owing us was going to pay up and he also prophesied over jobs. I believe it and claimed it. How many of us remember that prophecy? The next day, I was returning from an appointment. My ex-boss called me and said he saw my missed call. But I told him, I never called you. So he asked if I have gotten another job. But I told him I was still taking my time. I was not in a hurry to find another job. So he said, if I was free, I should come later and see him. So I told him he can call whenever he wants to call. So he called me and we met. And he told me that he wants me to return back to my work immediately. That he was going to pay me the money he owed me from the previous month. And he was going to give me a life contract. Church, you can't hear this kind of testimony and not put your hands together to this great God. Now listen, that is not all. That is not all. He's so many, I am looking for it. He said, he's going to give me a life contract with an increase in my salary. And even proposed to pay me separately for weekend job. Which initially he has not been paying. And he said he's going to set aside a certain amount he's going to be giving me to buy fear for my car. Church, is this God not great? <laughs> Hallelujah. I have come to return all the glory to God because there is God in this commission. Miracle Assembly, turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, we they pray. Our God, they answer. You will be next in line to testify in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It is time for quality living daily devotional. And our topic this morning says, Harmony in the family. And our text is taken from the book of James, chapter 3, verse 16. And I read, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Harmony in a family is an essential tool for growth and upliftment of a home. Nothing prospers in an atmosphere of strife and chaos. By all means possible, ensure that your home is not lacking in peace, cordial relationships, and healthy connections against the family system. The devil uses people to achieve his target. Therefore, you must fight to ensure you are not the agent of disunity in your home. Scripture records that Cain killed his brother, Abel, because God gave a more acceptable, because Abel gave God a more acceptable offering. This shows us that disunity in families is an age-long problem. Dating back to the first family, Fight the devil in prayers. Be intentional about forgiving one another. And ensure to communicate any grievances or concerns towards reaching an agreement on the best way to live with one another. Never leave a crack in your wall for the devil to penetrate his franchise. Remember, the blessings of the Lord is made available in an atmosphere of unity. Hallelujah. Let's turn to our feet as we take the scripture for the day. And it's taken from the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 15. 5 verse 9, I will read together. Matthew 5, 9. Let's read. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now shout it loud and clear. Say, I am a child of God. It's time for us to take our confession. This time you repeat after me. Say, I choose to be a peacemaker everywhere I go. Let's say it one more time. Say, I choose to be a peacemaker Everywhere I go, in Jesus' name. Now, church, are you ready to pray? It is time for prophetic prayers. You are going to declare in prayer this morning. Say, I refuse. I refuse. You are going to say this with some form of attitude. Say, I refuse, I refuse. to be used as an agent of hatred, strife, and disunity. In my home, in the name of Jesus. Child of God, open your mouth and begin to pray and begin to reject it. That you will not be an agent of hatred. You will not be an agent of strife. You will not be an agent of disunity. In your family, in your place of business, in your community, in the name of Jesus. You have said it this morning that you are a peacemaker. Open your mouth and pray and say, I will not be an agent of strife, an agent of disunity. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, I decree peace 
understanding and harmonious living in my family in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to speak peace to your family and harmonious living to your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray and say as I step to my family this day we will experience peace on all sides in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Finally this morning say I render useless. You are not saying it like a soldier of Christ. Say I render useless every demonic plan to bring down everything I have built and nurtured in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Nothing fails in your hands in the name of Jesus. Everything you have built, it will not be brought down in the name of Jesus. Short with a shout, shall we make welcome our prophets. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a better handsome body this morning. Oh, come on. If that's for Jesus, then I don't want that. Come on, somebody celebrate the Lord, the master of the universe, the king of your heart. Wow, what a blessing. Did you hear those testimonies? My God, what God does for one, he will do for another. Like I always say, if he blesses your neighbor, he's in your neighborhood. He's coming to your house. More than my mouth can testify. Lift up your hands to heaven. More than my mind can comprehend. I see the wonders of your grace. I'm so sure that this is not the end. Let's sing it again. More than my mouth can testify. Lift up your hands, everybody. More than my mind can comprehend. I'm sorry. I see the wonders of your grace. I'm so sure that. This is not the end. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yeah, baby. See how far you brought me. Yes, yeah, baby. I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your. I will sing your praise. Oh, 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 oh. Sing it. See how far you brought me. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so glad you, so found, glad you, found, you found me worthy. Oh, oh, oh. I can see. I can, tell, I can hear. I know. And I know. I can see you. I can see. I can tell. I can tell. I know. And I know. It's your, it's your grace. Oh my, oh my days. I will sing your grace. Somebody, I can see you. I can see. I can tell. I can tell.
I speak into your lives. You will testify. This week, nothing will hinder your testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will strengthen your heart. You will not falter. You will not fail. You will not fall. The Lord will order your steps in the right direction. Grace will announce you. Grace will keep you. Grace will protect you. Grace will open doors for you. Shout amen if you receive it. My God, from today, your life shall only be described by grace. Where man's labor ends, grace will kick in for you. Where your sweating and your toiling ends, grace will speak for you. Shout a believing amen, everybody. Before you take your seat, you're going to do me a favor by hollering grace. One, two, shout. One, two, shout. For the last time, shout grace. That shall be your story from today. Clap your hands as you take your seat. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow, what a service already. What an anointing. What a blessing. You know, I'll tell you the truth. Miracle Assembly is the best place to be here, man. I have always said, even if I wasn't a pastor here, I still would be a member here. Because the grace of God is evident in our lives. And guess what? Man's labor is good, but God's grace is better. Grace will take you further faster. Are you still here? Grace is the cure for disgrace. So any devil that is packaging disgrace for you, grace will meet them at the entrance, at the doorpost. Anytime your name is mentioned, grace will answer for you. Oh, you didn't say amen. I said grace will speak for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a recipient of grace. That's who we are, those of us who are born again. When you receive Jesus, you become the John of God. The word John means the one who has received grace. And you know, God's grace is what gives you the ability to succeed regardless of your effort. It is God's grace that puts power to your hand and speed to your feet so that you don't run a fruitless and futile effort. You become successful, productive, and everything will begin to speak in your favor. That's the beauty of Christianity summarized to you. The Bible says the law came by Moses. He said, but grace and truth, John chapter 1, verse 17, came by Jesus. So while Moses brought the law, Jesus brought grace, and grace is better than law. Law says you do it. Grace says I've done it for you. There's a difference. Law says you go through the stairways. Grace says you take the elevator. How many of you know you arrive faster? I know many of you are very smart. You like to take the stairways. You hustle. Mm -mm, me, I like grace. That's where your life will be. Yeah. While you are struggling to get to floor 10 and you are panting, you are floor 30 and you are refreshed. Somebody holler grace. grace. Ah! It's better. It's better. You enter into the inheritance of others. It's grace. We are recipients of grace. And that is just what captures what Miracle Assembly represents. Because people don't understand why our church is unique. We, we, we advance the grace of God beyond <clears throat> our physical ability. It's not like we have become non-responsible. Um, of course, that's our teaching throughout this month. We've been teaching you how to take responsibility for life. But there's something you need to know. And that there's a limit to which human ability can take you. Okay, that's going to be my Wednesday's message. So let's come back to today. I found out something. And it's a secret. You know, part of my responsibility as a pastor is to research. I'm a researcher by nature because I love to discover things. And I'll tell you why I came into that. I found out that too many mysteries are in life until God told me that there is no mystery to life, that the mystery can be decoded. So I said, okay, so, so what does that mean? So in, in, in my research of how life is, because you see, as a pastor, I deal with people. Our responsibility as pastors is not just to deal with facility, uh, material stuff, procedures and processes. No, 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 it's about people. It's about people. And in my close observation of people, I found out something that startled me. And that is that when people have 
problems, issues or challenges, whichever you like to call it. The first thing they do is that they run in search of solution, the repetition of evil occurrences. So I said, okay, so teach me. So in scriptures, I found that something. What did I find out? Write this down. That the secret to life is not the search for solution. The secret to life is not the search for answers. That startled me because I felt if I'm poor, I should go for wealth and riches. See that? If I'm sick, I should go for healing. If I'm stuck, I should go for freedom. God says this is the reason why a lot of people are frustrated. Because they are fixated on solution and answers. For example, you are poor. The next thing you want to do is, hey, what can I do to become rich? No. 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 But I said, God, what's wrong with that? He says, now let me teach you. So this is what the Lord taught me. He says, the secret to life is not the search for answers. The secret to life is the search for questions. I'm like, really? He says, questions lead to discovery. And discovery leads to recovery. Bam! The light bulb just turned on. See, once you ask the right questions, you will get the answer. Now, let me tell you the consequence or the back, you know, the, 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 the challenge, so to speak, you know, of going for solutions. If, like most people do, all you need is money, money. I'm poor, I'm poor. I need more money. The question is that if you don't ask the question why you are poor, once you get the money, that thing that made you poor, we collect the money. Yeah. So it becomes what you call a vicious circle. Are you still with me? And that's what a lot of people are going through. It's a vicious circle. They're just going round and round in circle. Not making progress. Wow. So I say so. What does that mean? He says, until you accurately diagnose the problem, you cannot recover from it. So, the smartest people in life are not those who are running after answers. The smartest people in life are those who are asking the right questions. Because questions are the seeds for answers. Say amen. amen. Alright. You say, yeah, pastor, I get you. But I have this question to ask. What can I do to be rich? Good enough, you're asking a question. What can I do to be healed? What can I do to have peace and join my marriage? Pastor, that's a question. But no, no, that's a question, but that's the wrong question to ask. You see, there's a difference between asking the right and the wrong question. You see, so what should be the right question? This is what you should be asking. Why am I not rich yet? Why am I not married yet? Why is my marriage always having, why are we always fighting in our marriage? Let me tell you the difference. The first question eh, shuts you down, shuts your brain down. The second question opens you up. For example, let's use finances. What can I do to be rich? It's a linear question. It takes you only in one direction. And that's a trap. Yeah. Because in the quest to become wealthy, watch this, you start moving in a path that your mind, to a large extent, have devised or fabricated or designed for you, based most times on assumption or hearsay. But the second question, why am I not rich yet, is an open-ending question. It gives you a divergent view to life. Are you still with me? So in as much as we agree that questions are the seeds for answers, the right question, that's why I said until you accurately, now we have doctors here who tell you the fact that there is no prescription without proper or accurate diagnosis. In fact, it becomes medical malpractice to an attempt to prescribe or treat somebody without first diagnosing what the problem is. Doctors, am I right? Absolutely. Now, where is the challenge? The challenge is not in rushing to prescribe because that's what a lot of us do. So for you, when you are dealing with, watch this, lingering problems, most lingering problems as a result of wrong diagnosis. Most lingering problems, perennial problems, problems that has refused to abate, to shift, to move away, to disappear. They are still there. 
Listen, to a large extent, they are functions of the wrong diagnosis. So you need to accurately diagnose. Let me show you how I got that. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 12. Look at it. See, Solomon, the wisest guy, said, I, Ecclesiastes 1 12, he says, I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Watch his lifestyle. And this is what did it for me. He says, and I gave my heart to seek and what? Search. See the two words. To seek and to search by wisdom. I'm searching out something by wisdom concerning all things that are done under the heaven. In other words, I set myself to say, I need to figure out life. I want to know why this is, why that is, why these things are happening, why that is happening. I'm not going to base my conclusions on any assumption. And I'm going to come to that soon. So I want to figure it out. But look at the next thing he says. He says, this sought travail. Now, the words, the phrase sought travail means this responsibility. In case I didn't tell you, for those of you coming for the first time, our topic is take charge. Amen? That's what, if, I'm not sure I said it when I started. So, okay, it's take charge. Because I'm sorry, so we're teaching series, and we've started since the beginning of this month. Now, if you've been with us, you will know that the premise of this teaching is to let you know that you cannot afford to live your life to chance or you don't stand a chance. That irresponsibility is the transference of blame to somebody else for your own action or inaction. And that what you do nothing about, nothing happens to it. You can't afford to sit idly by and allow the tidal waves of life beat upon you and steer your destiny in the wrong direction. You can't afford to do that. Your life is too precious. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now for more on that, you go get all the messages we've done in the past because we've been building line upon line. Now, what Solomon is saying, he says, and this sort travail, the word sort travail means this responsibility has God given to who? To the sons of men that you are what? Free to exercise. In other words, God says, I conceal it. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the honor of kings to what? Unravel it. So when you say life is shrouded in mystery, you don't become successful by Dealing with mysteries. All mysteries need to be unraveled, decoded, revealed. That's what you call revelation. Otherwise, you don't benefit from it. And unfortunately, what people don't understand, they mystify. So we in Africa, we like to say it's a mystery. Something they under, you know. We mystify what we don't understand. The reason for coming to church is to unravel. Somebody say apocalypse. is a Greek word for revelation. Calypsis and apple. Apple means a way. Open. There's a mystery that needs to be decoded. But I don't know how we pride in mystery. They ask you now, oh, but how are you succeeding? You say, well, this is a mystery. Two things. It's either you don't know or you don't want to share. Are you still with me? It's either you don't know or you don't want to share. The kingdom of God, yes, is coded. But we have been anointed. You see, the Bible is a book of codes. That's why he anointed us to decode. You said, no, I'm going to do my own in my house. My church is in my house. I'm going to look at you. You are like that Ethiopian eunuch who was reading. And Philip came and said, do you understand what you are reading? He said, hey, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody needs to explain it to you. So somebody who says, you don't need to go to church. Read the Bible for yourself. You don't know what you are talking. There's an anointing upon us. The same verse you are looking at, I'm looking. I'm seeing 15 things. You can't even see anything. Oh, come on, am I still talking to the right crowd? That's how life is. Somebody can be your age mate, but he knows more than you. Oh, you don't agree? Ah. Oh. Somebody can even be junior to you, but he has discovered life faster than you. That's the truth. So it's not like the exclusive preserve of those who are older. Eh, I see you are get sense. No. Sense and age don't come together. Unfortunately, some people gather age, but leave wisdom behind. I hope I'm not describing somebody here. Because responsibility is what determines maturity. It's not age. It's not age. You know why I'm stressing this? In Africa, we are very conscious of age. That's why it's difficult for somebody older to learn from somebody younger. I've seen you you. In life, there are no age mates, only classmates. You say, what do you mean? You will still understand. It's a mystery. <laughs> My point is, Solomon said, this is your responsibility. Look up your neighbor, say, it's your life. 
Say, figure it out. That's the premise of my series. You can't, you can't be blaming your dad, your mom, and my husband, my wife. Hey, will you do that? All you are asking is pity. I refuse to be pitied. Shout it, I am not in the pit. You know, many of us are very comfortable with the fact that somebody says, hey, yeah, sorry, oh, no, sir. You will not be pitied anymore. I prophesy to you, nobody will have any reason to say sorry to you. Because they won't see sorrows around you. Shout a louder amen if you receive that. So until the thief is caught, until there is a discovery, there is no recovery. Let me show you something in Proverbs 24 verse 12. Okay, look at verse 14. Skip 12. Go to 14. Proverbs 24, 14. He says, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be, karukayada, unto thy soul. The knowledge of wisdom shall be to thy soul when thou hast found it. You only find what you are seeking and searching for. When thou hast found it, there shall be what? There shall be a reward. There shall be a recovery and your expectation shall not be what? The searching, the seeking. When you have found it, until there is a discovery, there cannot be a recovery. There shall be a reward until you find it. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 30 and 31. He says, men, do not despise a thief when he steals to satisfy his souls because he's hungry. Proverbs 6 30, 31. Now, he says, but if he be what? Found. If that thief is caught, he shall be made to restore how many fold? Seven fold. And he shall give up all of the substance of his house. Hear me now. Until the thief is caught, there is no hope for recovery. If the person who stole your stuff is the one helping you to look for it, how many of you know is going to keep pushing you away from where you are going to look at it? Until the thief, that one that is plundering your life is caught, there is no hope for recovery. What I'm saying is that until there is a discovery, there is no recovery. You know what happens really? The reason many of us have this perennial problem, the problem is lingering, is because the enemy chooses to shroud it in misery. Satan is called the god of darkness because he thrives in darkness. What does darkness tell you? Something that is hidden, covered. But Jesus is light. God is light. What does light tell you? Something that is open. So when you say mystery, it's not God. It's light. In him there is no iota of darkness. So you come to church so that this code should be decoded for you to say, whoa. Listen, any doctor, any hospital who teaches, who tries to treat you without first diagnosing, like, yeah, like I said, it's my practice. So here's what they do. You go through a lot of problems. You say, I went to this hospital, I went to that hospital, I went to this doctor, to this doctor, and they did so many tests. They try, they can't figure it out because they have not been able to discover so one day you say, now I went to one guy. And the guy looks at me and says, okay, go do this test, go do this test. And when I did, he came back and said, aha, this is the problem. You know what? Even if they are all doctors, there are levels of knowledge. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Good. What I'm trying to say to you is that until you discover the root cause, what is causing this thing, you may not recover. And one of the tricks of the devil is that he sheets it. Sometimes even scan won't see it. If it's a demonic thing, they will cover it. Are you still with me? You'll be hustling. I don't know everybody's succeeding, but my own is not working. Until you discover. He says, if you don't discover, there's no recovery. But I pray that there's discovery for you today. Yeah. You just keep groping in the dark. Keep fumbling and stumbling. Doing trial and error. Walking on assumption. Hitting it once in a while. But the thing keeps coming up. I pray that the light of God will shine upon your life. Until there is a discovery. There is no recovery. If you don't know what is the cause of the problem, you don't know what the source of that problem is, you can't recover from it. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. He's, he's shrouding it in misery. He's putting a darkness over it. He's covering it. So that you are wasting your time. And God help you. Some people have died. I have a friend who had a medical condition. Some doctors here will know. He's a very wealthy friend of mine. He'll cough. When he starts coughing, after a while, he'll pass out. And he's not conscious that he has passed out. Two, three minutes. It happened. One day he was inside the car. His driver was driving him and he coughed. After a while, he passed out. They started happening like that. He said to me, my kids will just start crying. Because when it happens, sometimes he'll be discussing with his wife and kids in his living room. And maybe he will just start coughing. The next thing, he will pass out for like three, four, five minutes. They'll start eating, then he'll come back to life again. He said it happened like 18 times. He had gone to all hospitals. 
he tried a lot of things. Then he took leave. So one day he went to see another friend of us, common friend of us. And he was talking, he says, ah, I'm having this problem, you know. When I, so the guy and I said, ah. He says, I've done this. I've done. As at this time, he has spent a few millions going to different consultants. And they tried their best. Nothing wrong. So the friend that says, don't you have a visa? He says, yes. He says, why not just travel to the UK and just, or to America? He says, okay, I think UK is closer than US. Let me go to the UK. This is his story. It was Steph and his wife. He said it's so bad that when it happens, he's, he loses consciousness. Cut a long story short. <laughs> First of all, he got into the plane. He said it happened inside the plane. He said his wife that knows the woman used anchor, uh, blanket to cover him when he passed out. But after the wife came back to life. He said immediately they got down at the airport in London. He has a sister who is a nurse in London. The sister had already arranged to call ambulance. Let me tell you, I'm telling you this story. So as they arrived straight, they just took him straight to the hospital from airport. Cut a long story short. When he got there, he said that morning, the thing happened again. So when they got there, the sister had already, because the sister works in the hospital, so they had already made the arrangement, you know. Anyway, so they, they now went. So they should go and run test. First thing he said, he said, when he got there, he was going to take away his shirt. I think they said, they said, the nurse started laughing. Why are you taking off your shirt? He said, where I came from? They used, he said, come on, leave your shirt on. <laughs> so that one made me laugh anyway. He said, he said, he said just stand. He said, the x-ray machine took it. I said, hey, America wonder. <laughs> oh, London wonder. Anyway. <laughs> I'm, looking at, I'm going to advanced technology. That's why I'm telling you this story. See, so they just took sample. They just went downstairs to do the X-ray, then came up. It says, a few minutes later. It wasn't long. They brought the report. He said the doctor, an Indian doctor, looked at him and said, did you say you fainted this morning for the first time? You see, Nanjama, he wanted to be smart. He said, it's true. He said, the doctor said, you mean this thing has not been happening to you before? He said, no. This is the first time. As I just came to London, I don't know. That's why the thing happened. Now, why came me for London? The doctor said, no. He says, you are very lucky. He says, from what I can see, this thing may have been happening to you. And you would have died. That's how you would have just passed on. He called it a name. Then he just said, let me show you. He said he brought out something from his side. Something like he put it in one, like text tube. Put another one. Put. He says, watch. He said, when the color changed to a particular color. He said, this is the thing. Why they were talking. So this is it. He says, it's a bacterial infection. Then, you know the one that now blew me away? He said, just root. He said they should go and get the, this thing. You know what the medication is? Ampiclos. <laughs> For 21 days. He said, you see, this one didn't work. This one didn't work. My guy and his wife said in their heart, this man don't know anything. You know where I don't pass for Nanja. He said he started taking the medication morning and evening. He became fine. He said he just told him, this is it. He said people have died. So why he was telling me the story? He said, Pastor, help me thank God. I would have died in Nigeria. Now, not because our doctors are not good, but sometimes they don't have the equipment. You see where I'm going with the story. Sometimes they don't have all of these things. So you don't blame our Nigerian doctor. Because many of you are quick to say, hey, they don't know. Mm -mm. Some of them also know pass others. Why I told you this story? So that you'll be humble enough to admit that there is a level to which you know. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, I know what I'm doing. If you know what you are doing, how come you are owing everybody in the compound? <laughs> you know, this arrogance that we portray, you know, I see you, you, if it is about age, how come you are broke, sir? Are you getting me? I'm saying so. Yeah, he said when they gave him the medication, he said just this. The guy said, yeah. he said, since then he has not experienced it. Told him how he contracted it. What happened? Now, if he had died in Nigeria, guess what? Now when kill him. Hope you know. Somebody is behind it. Why did I tell you this story? Discovery. Discovery. So smarter doctors will say, look, this thing they will not refer you to. A consultant also. Those ones will say, no, no, you go here. But some, because they are all interested in your money, they will be doing guesswork. Hope you know what I'm saying. Criminals, they'll be doing guesswork. They won't refer you. I don't want to say something there. Let me just leave that one. I don't want to spend any doctor's work this morning. <laughs> but hear me. 
There are three major sources of problems in life. The first is you. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? See, when you are going through a lingering problem, that's what I'm trying to diagnose this morning. That's what I'm trying to deal with this morning. When you are noticing something is repeating, I mean, a bad experience, problem. There are three major sources to any problem in life. Number one is you. You say, Pastor, you mean me? Creating problem for myself? Yes. Unfortunately, you do not know that every problem that is in your life, you participated directly or indirectly. Yes. You participated in it directly or indirectly. You say, how did I participate? Let me tell you. The challenge for most people is that they don't realize that it's not about intention. Pastor, I didn't intend to create problem for myself. Yes, sir, you are right. But that's why I make this statement all the time. That it is decision, not intention, that determines destination. It is decision, not intention, that determines destiny. Nobody intends to mess up their lives. It's true. I've never met anybody who says, I want to fall into a pit. No. I want to have a problem. No. You are sincere. Your intentions are right. But let me tell you what I found out about life. Life does not respond to intentions. It responds to decisions. Yes. And in case you are not aware, indecision is decision. Oh, don't you know? If you refuse to decide, it's because you have decided not to decide. It's true. So when you don't do anything about your life and hope and expect that things will just turn out right, you are dreaming. That's what I'm saying. What you do nothing about, nothing happens to it. Everything remains perpetually in a state of rest or uniform motion until a force is applied. If you don't apply that force, sir, your life will be in the same way. Are you still with me this morning? It's okay. So for some who haven't heard this, they say, okay, I'm going to do something. Now, when you want to do something, that's why I said, don't just do until you find the right path. Diagnosis. Don't just start prescription until you have accurately what? Diagnosed what the problem is. Because in life, most people base their decisions on assumptions. There are two ways that you make decisions. You either make a decision based off of assumption or off of what? Facts. Assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. It's also the lowest form of thinking. Many of us look at a guy and say, he looks good, looks nice. Then you ask your friend, how do you see him? He said, the guy looks cute, looks a guy, nice guy. Honestly, both of you are right. But unfortunately, he's the cousin of the devil. You didn't know good intention. And to make matters worse, you even invited all of us to come for the wedding. And look at the way you were dancing. But a few years down the road, you find out that you just married the cousin of the devil. Ah, pastor, sincerely, I thought, yes, sir, yes, ma. If you knew that investment was going to wipe off your capital, will you put your money? Let me show you the verse. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. Look at the verse here. He says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of what? Leave that verse on the screen. Let me explain. Somebody says, seem. You know, the old King James English says simic. Say sim. Let me tell you. The word sim means appear. The guy appears nice. The lady appears kind and beautiful. But you don't know Azeno. No, I'm serious. The day you marry, you see, because for you, nobody goes to say, so look at the way you were dancing on your wedding day. If you knew that girl was going to ruin you, will you marry her? That's it. You didn't know. You were sincere. Your intentions were right. In fact, you had so good intention that you even invited the whole community. But see the word seems. What does it mean? He appears. If you knew that road would kill you, will you enter? That is where the problem is. Hey, Pastor, I didn't know. Ignorance of the law, they say, is not an excuse. They know what they say in law. Meaning, your intentions are right, but you decided to go on the road. I pray for you. But before I pray, let me tell you why I need to pray that prayer. So that your email will be loud. <laughs> You know what Satan does? Satan manipulates, see the word I'm using, manipulates people to make decisions. Watch it, that will imprison their destiny. The key word is manipulation. So when you say, ah, the remoter, the manipulator, that's what I'm saying. They can't deal with you until you are manipulated. Now, the word manipulation has some elements of deception. Is that what it is? You are deceived. Because if the guy just shows up and says, I want to marry you, but I will use you for ritual after three months. 
Won't you borrow leg and join your leg? Or the guy marries you and say, you know, you are a big boy, nice guy, but I want to bring you down. Will you still, in fact, you even leave her inside the car and just start running and say, you can carry the car away. My point is, it seems right. Now, this seem, the same thing with business, it's the same thing with relocation. It seems like America, South Africa, Canada is good. You seem, he relocates you out of your place of fruitfulness. It seems. Satan knows that until you participate in the decision, he cannot ruin you. So that's my prayer for you. My prayer for you is that may you not be manipulated by witchcraft to make decisions that will imprison your destiny. Shout a loud amen to that prayer. Because all witches need is manipulate you. You will see the guy defending the girl before the family. And you know the bad part? You are sincere. I'm not faulting you. The business. People have put money in businesses. That's, you know what I'm saying? They are regretting it now because you wiped up their investment. If you knew that that thing was a gaping hole, will you put your money inside? That's the key word. Now, I'm saying this to say, you participated. You made the decision. You say, but pastor, I didn't decide. That's also a decision. Because your decision is either based off of assumption or facts. So what I'm saying is that you don't fail with facts. You, you, you see, when you work on assumption, nine times out of ten, you make a wrong decision. Now, how do you get the facts? Discovery. How do you get discovery? Ask the right questions. Are you still here? Ask the right questions. Many of us don't ask questions. Why? I know too much. You see where I'm going with it? And leave me, I know what I'm doing. Sir, the only evidence of knowledge is freedom. John 8, 32. How do you test knowledge? Freedom. If what you are seeing is different from what you are expecting, or got two things. It's either you are wrong or you have applied it wrongly. I'm dealing with perennial problem. That's what I'm solving this morning. Consistent problem. If it's lingering, somebody said, I have done everything. It's not working. You have only done what you know. Don't tell me you have done everything. There are still lots of things you don't know. That's why when you go to university and you graduate and they give you a degree, this university authority, they are so smart. They say what you got is a degree. What is the circle called? 360 is the degree. Not be so. They gave you a degree in economics. It doesn't mean you know everything. They are saying come back next time to do another one. Before you start moving with arrogance, I'm a graduate. It's a degree they gave you. A. The thing is so wide that they gave you a little portion. Knowledge is continuous. Are you still here? That's why sound doctors, hospitals, they test. They don't base decisions off of assumption. You become a herbalist. Just do, oh, I have my mother worried. <laughs> Guesswork is not science. That's why they say science is discovery. Have you noticed that? That's what I'm saying. In the things of God, we don't blindly fight. We fight with precision. Say amen. amen. The road seems right. I pray for you. May you not be found on the road that will cut short your life. Any man, woman, boy that is not part of your future, may you not be connected to that person. Shout amen now as I'm preaching. Before you start disturbing us in counseling. Now will you marry the person? If you knew better, will you? Eh, pastor, we don't know now. But you see, the Holy Ghost knows the end of a matter from the place of the beginning. If you have consulted with the Holy Ghost, he would have told you. The Spirit of God would have... Are you not a Christian? As many as are led by what? Not as many as are led by Jeep. <laughs> yes. As many as are led by money. Like I said, there's profit. They are luring you. They won't manipulate you. Amen. People have been lured away from safety to untimely death. That will not happen to you. Amen. But if you ask the Holy Ghost, you know what happened to Lot now? You know Lot? He looked at the field. It looked green. Not so? And he pitched his tent, not knowing that he's so dumb. It's going to be destroyed. May you not go where we ruin you. Amen. The intention is good. The intention is good. The intention is good. There are people that have been kidnapped in an attempt to be nice. You saw somebody stranded, pretending to be stranded, a lady. And you say, you stop, let me pick her, not knowing that she's an agent. Hope you know what I'm saying. But is it wrong to help somebody? No. Intended to pick her and she brought her gun. And her boys, you know, she's the couple. The boys knocking. Does it not happen? But you, it was intention. 
But as you were driving and the Holy Ghost told you, stop for no man, will you stop? Somebody may think you are wicked. My prayer for you is that may you be led and guided by the Spirit. Yeah. Another part of this thing that I'm saying is that you participated in this issue because if you inquired of the Spirit or you sought right counsel and not base your thing off assumption, you will get answer. He says in the multitude of counseling, there is what? Safety. Do you know what the enemy does? He isolates you so that you think that you know it better. He gives you a factor of secrecy. Don't tell anybody. Do it to yourself. Yes, it is true. But if you don't know what you are doing, please stop doing it. Because the day you know as you ought to know, you begin to live as you ought to live. My people are destroyed. Who's here for six? For what? They lack knowledge. You know why they lack knowledge? Because they work based on assumptions. I'm old. I can't somebody be telling I won't go to church. I can't somebody preach it to me. I know what I'm doing. You know what you are doing. Look at. No, look at. You are always fighting your mind. Look at, look at. Humility demands that you ask questions. You see, pride will never ask questions. This is where I'm going with this message. You participated. If you are where you want to be, praise God, you are applying it right. But the second part, besides you, is other people. I wish it were not true, I would have told you. There is a place of people in the breaking and making of destiny. What I found out is that besides you being the cause of your problem, some other people are also part of your problem. If you don't know, open your ears and hear me now. Whilst it is true that people are your asset, there are some people that are evil. Their number one assignment is to pull you down. Is to do you harm and wickedness. In fact, look at what David said in Psalm 109 verse 2 and 3. He says, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. He says, they have spoken against me with a lying tongue. Verse 3 is what got to me. He said, they compassed me about also with words of hatred. Ha! And fought against me without a cause. What did you do? Nothing. These people are just wicked, vicious, malevolent, and evil. In case you are not aware, there are some certain problems you are going through today in your life that are not caused by you, but by other people. Let me explain what scripture says in Psalm 74 verse 20. Look at what he said. He says, have respect unto the covenant. He's praying to God. Have respect unto the covenant. I mean, he's telling you as a child of God. Have respect unto the covenant. He says, because the dark places of the earth are what? Full of the habitation of what? You see the word they use? Cruelty. You know what is called cruelty? You didn't do anything. I mean, if you did something for which you are suffering for, it's understandable. This one, just because you are smart and progressive, all the devils will wake up. They hate you without a cause. That's what he's saying. He says they fight me, they lie against me, they spread bad news against me without a reason. Some of you don't realize that you are beautiful. Just irk somebody's anger. Oh yes, that your husband loves you and they are saying, oh, he's saying, only her. somebody's belly just bad. Sometimes, if even people who are close to you, who take information from you and use it against you. You know, I explained to you, if the person that is stealing from you is the one helping you look for the thing, he will keep distracting you from going there. People have been planted. He says, without a cause. And many of you are wondering, hey, no, what did I do? You didn't do anything. It is your success that is doing the thing. Shara takapayadaha. He says, the habitations of the earth are full of cruelty. Cruel people. And let me tell you what you do to those people, like David did. Psalm 35 verse 4. I like the way David prayed, and that's what I want to pray. He says, let them be confounded. I didn't hear your amen. amen. And put to shame that seek after my soul. He said, let them be turned back and be brought to confusion. That divides my heart. Verse number five. He said, let them be as chaff before the wind in the name of Jesus. And let the angel of the Lord chase them away. Let their way be dark and slippery. And let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Why? Verse 7. He said, for without cause, they have gone to hide or they hid for me their net in a pit. Which without cause, I didn't do anything. They have did a pit for my soul. Verse 9. 
He said, let destruction come upon him and take him on our And let the net that he has hidden to catch me, catch him in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Psalm 109. Yeah, we read it for. Look at verse 3. He says, They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. Verse 4. He said, For my love, they are my adversaries. I was kind to them, I was good to them, but they turned out to be my enemy. But what did I do? But I give myself to what? If you don't pray against them, if you don't pray, they'll get you. Somebody told me, when her and the husband are having problems, she will go and talk to the mother-in-law to solve. Not knowing that the mother-in-law is the one feeling the problem. She's the one instigating the thing against the son. How can the person you run to, to help you, be the one killing you? How will you resolve it? The person that you are explaining the matter to is the one that is giving the information that they are using as weapons against you. No wonder in Job chapter 5 verse 12, he said he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. I want to pray for 25 persons this, this morning. Any man, woman, boy, gay that is involved in whatever is affecting your life as you shout amen and shoot there with the arrow of the spirit. Amen. Stand to your feet. Listen to me. See, there is a place of people in the making or breaking of destiny. Wicked and evil men he says, they are around me without a cause. He says, I'm good to them. I'm nice to them. But what they do, they repay evil for good. I pray in the name of Jesus. Anyone pretending to be a friend who is part of your problems, as you shout amen, the Lord will disgrace them in the name of Jesus. Amen. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. There are some of them, they are critical. They are envious. You are not the reason why they are down. Do you know amongst children of the same parents, one is succeeding, the others will gang up. You are not the reason why they are poor. You didn't take their money. I remember somebody said, he said, uh, someone prophet said, he's your brother and that took your star. No, no, what he was telling me, he said the prophet said he took his brother's star. I said, wait, you took your brother's star. No, wait. So he has star. How come the star didn't shine in his life? You see nonsense. You took your brother's star. He said, that's why I'm rich. He said, so the entire family ganged up against me. I've been trying to help this, my brother. He said, I'm the one that took his star. If you have star and it didn't brighten your life, he says, stupid star. I don't even want it. Can you imagine the nonsense? You took his star. If he was rich before and he now became poor, then maybe we'll be suspecting. Then you were poor. Are you with me? You will say they substituted. You have been broke from day one. You say you have star. I don't like that one. Do you want that kind of star? Ah, okay. The star not shining in life. Umba no, I don't take that star. But you see, it's not about it's about the manipulation to create hatred. You know what they now did? They now gang up and they were attacking him spiritually. That's why I came to me for prayers. I pray for you. In fact, let's pray the prayer. Give me on the screen. Say, I decree. I decree. The downfall. The downfall. Of anyone. Of any man. Seeking to harm me. Seeking to harm my children. Or my children. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. I decree the downfall. Of any man who may break it. That is seeking to harm me. Or my children. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Anyone who is out to frustrate me. The Lord frustrates them. Anyone who is out Any bitch they have done for me. They shall fall inside. In the name of Jesus. I decree the downfall. Of any man, woman, boy, girl that is seeking to hurt me, or my children, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Say I return. I return. Every demonic arrow, every demonic arrow, shot at me, shot at me. Back to the center. Back to the center. Open your mouth and return it. Any demonic arrow, they have shot at you, to your husband, your children, your life. Open your mouth and return it. He says every tongue that rises up against me in judgment. I shall condemn every tongue, every demonic arrow that is shot against me. Back to the center, back to the center, back to the center. In the name of Jesus, any Peter, they have dug for me, they shall fall inside. Any trapper, they have set for me, the trap will catch them, the trap will catch them, the trap will catch them. In the name of Jesus, Amen. 
Say I break loose. I break loose. I can hear you. Say I break loose. I break loose. From every satanic From bondage. Every satanic or entanglement. Or entanglement. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Open Jesus. your mouth and break loose. Break that chain. 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 Break you are coming out of it. I break you loose from satanic bondage. Your destiny is coming out. I lose you. I free you. In the name of Jesus. As you stretch forth your hands in my direction, I prophesy over your life that any man, woman, boy, girl that is out to frustrate you, as you shout amen, I declare them incapacitated. Amen. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He said they hated me without a cause. But the Lord will frustrate the iPhone. Amen. Their evil hands will not be able to perform Amen. activities. The Lord will keep you and protect your children. Amen. Any pit they have dug for you, they shall fall inside in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Any trap they have set for you shall catch them. Amen. As they shall catch them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They have poured that sleep written on the floor for you to sleep. Uh, they will be caught in it by themselves. Amen. You know how they set a booby trap. You know what a booby trap is for you. You don't know. You just walk and you pass through it and the thing attacks you. My God. See, there is a place of people in the helping of destiny. But there are also evil people. That's why I say have respect on the covenant. I pity anybody who is not taking church seriously. You say I'm hustling. They are waiting for you until you rise. Because when the fall happens, it makes news. But you will not fall. Amen. I see a lot of us. Eh, and then they go to church. Oh God, your eye goes so clear. They are just waiting. You know, you know why it's not making news to them? You are like them. The day you start to distinguish yourself, all the witches will wake up. Because as far as all of us are poor, they are comfortable. But that devil is a liar. Amen. Can I tell you how you deal with enemies who are pretending to be friends? Hosea 4, 6. I read it before, but you didn't see it. Look at the revelation. He says, my people are destroyed. For what? leave that place. The way to destroy your enemy is to starve them of knowledge. That's it. Once they don't know what your plans are, they can't frustrate it. But you some people, we are far. And what's the new thing? It's not because he's interested. He's looking for information against you. I pray. Any man, woman, boy, girl who pretends to be a friend consigned in solving a problem or helping you who is using that privileged information to work against you as you shut amen from your spirit i frustrate them in the name of jesus amen they are the ones that will take phone bros i just said let me say hi to you ah Hi, it's my fiance. she's fine bros you know in this country when we have it we had you know we guess you know the things when we they do what you know they do? Say, bros, leave that thing. She has sown seed in the boyfriend's heart in America. So that when I peace call and say, calls the girlfriend, I say, hey, what are you people doing? You say, nothing. He says, don't, don't lie to me. Cut a long story short, there's already a crack. Now, now, see, I'm not making up this. I'm telling you how things work. The best way to destroy the enemy is to stab them of knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Many of you, your mouth is too porous. Some certain things should not be said until they have come to fruition. Do you know why God slapped um, Zechariah dump? He would have used his mouth to abort the baby. There are some pregnancies, I don't mean physical, that you are carrying. The angel needs to slap your mouth dump. You talk too much, so you aborted it. Wisdom demands that sometimes some certain things should stay hidden. That's why pregnancies are covered. It is when it is born, everybody knows. The sex. Are you following me? I'm using this metaphorically to say some certain things that are aborted in your life was because you spoke it too early. Are you still here? Yes, now, I'm not saying don't talk, but who are you talking to? Until you discover, you will not recover. Until the thief is found, he will keep doing you. Most people are criminals, thieves. Proverbs 6, 30, 31. They are the ones stealing from you. The thief commit not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Until you discover them today, may the Lord expose every friend Amen. who is pretending, 
who is indeed an enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. How can the person trying to settle the marital quarrel be the one foiling it? How do you recover? Is the one telling the daughter, the son, not to marry you anymore? The boy is misbehaving. But you still go and say, Mama, I don't know why my husband is behaving. He said, Don't worry, be prayerful. As you go and pray, we tell her and say, Ah, this girl is a bad girl. How can you recover? See, this is not to create suspicion of fear in your heart. I'm telling you that first you participated. Second, there are people. What do you do? You need discernment. I don't have time. My time is up. You need discernment. You see, by the discernment of the Holy Spirit from far miles away, you can tell. Ahitophel in Bible was David's right hand man. Ahitophel. That's his name. Very funny name. When they finish discussing, he's the one that carries the information. Until David was praying one day and found out. And this was his prayer. My final prayer. He said, oh God, turn the counsel of Ahitophel to foolishness. I'm praying that for you finally. Anyone who is speaking against you, words that people are believing and they are using it against you, the Lord will confuse their tongue in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will turn their counsel to foolishness Amen. in the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Did you receive the prayers this morning? I wish I could continue, but I can see people standing outside for third service. Let's give our thanks and offerings. Amen. Again, I want to beg all of you, please always attend service in the evenings. I mean, Wednesday eat service. Because we are going to continue with seven prophetic prayers. There's some prayers I need to pray more, but we don't have all that time. All right. So on Wednesday, we are going to continue with this teaching and we are going to be praying some more. Time for the service is 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Please come to church. This is for your good, please. All right. In church, we're through this many parts of the service. I hope you don't mind because so many people are standing outside for the next service. All right, let's give our offerings and our tithes. Make sure you are giving generously and the Lord will increase you and bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I bless everyone who is honoring you with their tithes, their seeds, and their offerings this morning. Let their lives continue to blossom. Let them continue to thrive. May no force of darkness be able to keep them down. Whatever is a desire in their heart today, through this seed, may it be translated to testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please give generously and give sacrificially to God's kingdom. While you are doing that, again, I re-emphasize that on Wednesday, 5 to 6.30 p.m. is service time. Wednesday, 5 to 6.30 p.m. Try and be in church physically. All right? I also want to encourage all of you. Um, to invite your friends and family members to church anytime you are coming to church. And also know that our care group fellowship is on. Attend the one nearest you and you will certainly have a wonderful experience. Okay, this Saturday, this Saturday, the 20th of this month, we are gathered here 9 a.m. to 12 noon for what we call Business Conclave. This edition, I'm going to be dealing with an interesting topic titled Maximizing Opportunities. People say, eh, eh, there's no money, there's nothing working. It's a lie. I'm going to show you <laughs> how you can take advantage of the opportunities that people are not seeing that will move your life and destiny to the next level. We call it Business Conclave, but it's open to everybody, whether you are a student, a homemaker, career person, everybody. And it's free. This Saturday, 9 a.m., GRA Church 2. Please. Unfortunately, we don't stream this service online. So it's purely a physically attended meeting. So you need to be here physically to participate. And there's also a time for Q&A. You want to be a part of it, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Let's be here. And it's going to be a wonderful experience for uh, during this program, Business Conclave. Okay. Um, if you're watching me with us for the first Sunday this morning, may I ask you to just wave your hands at me. I want to welcome you specially and give you a gift. Thank you, sir, for coming. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. What are the beautiful hands? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give them the gift and just take your Bibles, your bags. There's a light refreshment for you in the office. Just please rise up as we close. We are closing, but we want you to exit first. Congregation, celebrate these beautiful people as they go into the office. All right, if you are worshiping with us for the second Sunday, you don't need to stand, just wave your hands. We want to give you a feedback card or a testimony card to help me feel. If it's your second Sunday here, can you wave your hands while you are seated? Thank you, my dear. Can somebody spot the lady? There's a guy there. There's a beautiful lady there. There's another one at the back. Thank you. Please give them the card and a pen. Help me rush. Fill it out quickly, but don't take the card home. Please lift your hands. Ushers or protocol or which people are there. Thank you, sir. Please give them the cards. Give them the cards. Give them the cards. Or help me fill out the card quickly. Don't take the cards home. Drop them with any of your officials at the exit point before you leave, please. And uh, you are blessed in Jesus' name. Birthday advert if we have any. Quickly.
everyone celebrating, keep winning, keep shining, keep enjoying grace for maximum impact. You will not fail. This week shall answer to you in all good things. Anywhere you turn, favor will embrace you. Any man, woman, boy, girl that is stationed to harm you, the Lord will convert the harm to help. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The next agenda when we see shall be your testimonies. Say louder, amen. amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in God's presence forever and ever. Slap somebody, high five, hug, or handshake, and tell them you are blessed amen. and highly favored. So I'll see you guys on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. For a Christian to succeed, your strength is not in yourself. It's in following the lead of Jesus. Our effectiveness is to follow the shepherd. If you follow him, he will lead you in the path of righteousness. He will lead you beside still waters. He will prepare a table before you. It doesn't matter how many enemies that are standing on your way. As long as he is the one that prepared it, no devil can stop your prayer.